Hi, this is Rod. This is PhD Talk. Before we go further, I'd like to be upfront with you. I want to create a, big, uh, a series of weekly PhD videos which is designed to, number one, uh, attract you or draw your attention to my website. Check me out, see what, see what I do. Number two, over the years working with many PhD students, I've come across many problems, common problems, common issues which students experience. I simply want to offer some info which may help you, which you can use. So I want to share a couple of these tips with you. Before I do, I'm sure many of your students are suffering from stress, yeah? You have a problem, you're stuck, you've come to a roadblock in your PhD program, so you, I guess you could be stressed out right now as you're listening to me, watching me. Or you could be also working in order to pay for your PhD program. You may have money problems, serious money problems, or even more, you may have a family, and you've got to take care of family this while going through your PhD program. It's not easy. It's difficult. It's a tough time, right? Okay, so I also uh, like to draw your attention to a common phenomenon students experience is that when they come across a problem, they put it off to tomorrow. Let me tell you this. Putting a problem off to tomorrow never resolves the problem. There is no tomorrow. It just never gets done. Actually, putting off to tomorrow automatics, automates stress. It creates stress. Postponing the problem doesn't resolve it. In fact, the problem will, will just continue. So if you're stuck, one way to sort this pro your problem out, if you're stuck, just click on the link below right now and contact me. I'll get back to you in 24 hours. That's my promise to you. So today I want to share some ideas and tips with you, which I've gained over many years helping PhD students like you. I want to ask you, do you feel lonely? Do you feel sometimes you're just not good enough? You can't, you're just not good enough to do this? You know what? This is normal. It's perfectly normal. Everybody feels this way sometimes. It's a common problem for all, virtue of fact, all, all students doing a PhD. So regardless, my friend, whether you're in the beginning or in the middle, somewhere in the middle of your PhD program, let's, let's just talk. Just you and me. However, before we just proceed, proceed further, I just want to make you aware of a real important statistic. The other day I checked and 87% of my students only contacted me after they got a fail grade or hit a serious roadblock. Often those problems which prevent them proceeding further or they got a fail grade for was, were set, the problems were relatively simple and basic. They could have been fixed relatively easily. All right, so on a lighter note, just think of this. You won't believe the moment when you're told you can put doctor before your name. You know, you walk into the bank, you want to change your account name. From Mr., Mrs., Miss, whatever. You want to put a doctor in front of your name. What a beautiful moment. Hey, you know what? No one can take that, your PhD away from you once you've got it. Yeah, once you've got it, you've really got it. So let's get started. Today, two simple tips I doubt you'll find in the textbook. I doubt anybody have t has, has told you about. So here's the first tip. Let's call it time and resource management. Yeah, time and resource management, let's call it that. Most students, after completing assignments, make two copies. One to submit to the supervisor for grading purposes, and the second to keep in their personal file. I would suggest the following. Rather, make three copies of your weekly assignment. One to submit to the university, another for your personal records, and the third copy, and this is really, really important, not only save under the main topic, but also save under the subtopics. Why? Later on, 
You mm. will go back to those to the topics you've wrote, written about for one or two years, maybe longer, which you studied in early assignments. For example, one or two years later, after completing your credits to qualify to write a PhD dissertation proposal, you need some info about, say, strategic management. And you know you wrote an early assignment, maybe you even forgot, but by simply scrolling back very quickly, you could find the topic or the subtopics you're looking for. So, supposing you're writing about, about strategic management, save it under strategic management plus the subtopics. So, it could be strategic management dot strategic design or just design dot formulation dot implementation so you could save just like that simple topic and subtopics believe me these early assignments are incredibly useful they really are later on in your PhD when you need them most you've got them right there and you can find them in a few seconds Better still, just create a simple table of contents and list each assignment under one, the date, two, the topic, and three, the subtopics. Therefore, 18 months or two years later, as you're preparing or, or in the middle of your PhD dissertation proposal, you can go quickly, go back quickly and access the info you need. Here's the second tip. Let's call it, I don't know, supervisor feedback. You need to address all of the feedback. Yeah, this may sound obvious, right? It is. It's very obvious, but let me tell you, many students forget. You can't believe how many students forget or ignore some of the, or, or some parts of the feedback. For example, recently I saw one assignment feedback. The student, the supervisor, had noted that certain data was not cited and, number two, the assignment was not correctly formatted. Those two, those two issues wasn't formatted in terms of APA guidelines. The student had then duly amended by adding the correct citation, but had failed or did not fix the formatting problem. Why? I don't know. Maybe they didn't know how to. Maybe they didn't know what the formatting problem was. Often the supervisors don't tell you what the problem is. They just say, tell you there is a problem. You've got to figure it out. So this continued. Week after week, the students kept submitting assignments but the, the feedback which was omitted in the previous weeks was not, was not addressed. And so the problems accumul accumulated week after week. At the end of the 12-week course, you know what happened? Yeah, you guessed. The student got a fail grade for that course. That's actually when the student contacted me after paying over $4,000. Yeah, I think it was $4,800 to retake the course. It's a lot of money, right? You know what, less than $50, the student could have simply emailed me, WhatsApped or Skyped me and asked and, and uh, sent me the, a, cup, a sample of, those, of that feedback and we could have fixed those simple errors together and saved her thousands of dollars plus the unnecessary dress. So here's the takeaway. Take take away. Address all of the feedback. You may think these two tips are obvious, right? Yeah, you're right. They are very obvious. But you won't believe how many times students need info which they wrote about one or two years ago, forgot about it, or just simply couldn't find it. Moreover, you won't believe how many times students focus on one part of a supervisor's feedback and forget or fail to address all of it. This happens more often than you can ever imagine. How do I know this? Well, I have not only helped PhD students online for many years, but I also teach part-time at university. So next week, I want to share some more tips with you. Meanwhile, I want to ask you, do you have any questions? Do you need some free advice? Click on the link below today. Simply contact me by entering your name and email address. I will contact you in a few hours. Ladies, 24 hours. One more thing I want to just mention too, and this is quite important, I guess. If you just need a ver some simple advice, just very, very simple advice regarding a problem or an issue you're f trying to figure out, you contact me, I'm not going to charge you. I'll just help you. It's no big deal. 
However, you want me to help you and guide you throughout the PhD process and help you along and interpret instructions and so on for you and help you all in every part of the PhD program, I'll ha I will charge you for that. I'm not going to do it for free. I will charge you $20 an hour. I can hear you, I can hear you thinking. $20, that's expensive. Yeah, it is. Especially with a student on a limited budget. Yeah, I know where you're coming from. I've been there. But let me tell you this. Try me. See what you get for $20. You get a lot. You'll be surprised how much we can do for $20 in one hour. Meanwhile, I want to thank you for watching. Until the next time, goodbye.